Now, having defined an argument, let's drill down on the concept a little bit more and let's get clear about something. In particular, let's see what an argument is made up of. And basically, an argument has, an argument consists of two parts. One part is the conclusion. The point that it's the claim or statement that's supported or defended or justified. So it might be the statement of the philosopher's position. Or you encounter arguments all th throughout life. You're sitting in the cafeteria. You're having an argument about maybe it's a sporting event. Maybe it's you know what the best music is. Maybe what's the best thing to eat. There's always a conclusion that somebody's arguing in favor of. And that conclusion is can be at least summarized or stated as a claim or statement. And the person gives you reasons, right, for that conclusion. And the reasons are premises, a premise or premises. That is the claim or the claims or statements that are the reasons for accepting the conclusion. So what's going to be helpful now to really understand this particular example is we're going to take a look at an argument that we might see in the context of the problem of freedom and determinism and fatalism. And you could imagine somebody arguing in the following way about the problem. Look, everything people do is fated to happen. And that being so, because of that, no one acts freely. Now, what we're going to want to do is be able to take arguments like that on a regular basis and break them down into their component parts.